Hi everybody. In the last video, I talked about the uh, some of the underlying factors that could drive um, exercise intolerance. So there's a question that had a bunch of questions within it about an um, individual who was having um, a lot of soreness and just feeling worse after exercise. And so part one was kind of talking about the, the background there a bit. Um, and then there were some follow up or uh, further questions within this question that um, I didn't have a chance to get to. So that's what this video is all about. Uh, as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. And if you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So the uh, final questions in here are, um, or one of them is, what are the short and long-term strategies to counteract muscle soreness? Um, so I, I hate to say it because it's um, not a quick and easy answer, but or a quick and easy solution, I should say, but ultimately it's, um, identify and treat the root cause factors that are leading to that mitochondrial dysfunction in the first place that is perpetuating the muscle soreness and then ideally supporting the mitochondria as thoroughly as possible to help them get back on track. So it's kind of a very basic simple answer but that that's what I found to be the most helpful. Um, now with that being said you know one of the um, supplements that um, helps to support the mitochondrial function is uh, creatine and I have found that some patients definitely do well with taking creatine to help counteract that muscle soreness. Uh, I've also had um, some patients who have done uh, quite a bit better in terms of their muscle soreness getting better faster when we specifically chelate heavy metals out of their system. Now heavy metals are uh, mitochondrial poisons, they interfere with mitochondrial function, um, but that's something where um, when it comes to like actual root cause treatment factors that can move the needle sometimes faster for some patients than others, heavy metal chelation is, is sometimes on that list. Um, and also I, I'm still quite new into the world uh, or in the world of treating vitamin D receptor resistance, but I have uh, one patient case that's done like phenomenally well in a very short period of time, um, starting to address that uh, vitamin D receptor uh, resistance issue with taking appropriate doses of vitamin D. So those are just a couple of little clinical pearls on that. Um, another question within this one is how can I tighter uh, exercise to avoid crashes when energy is fluctuating? Um, so it's it's a really good question. I kind of touched on this a little bit on the first one, where the, in this um, within this the body of this question is, you know, one day I can run for ten kilometers, the next day I run for you know one kilometer and I crash. Um, and I kind of use the analogy, I believe, or the kind of example of like there's just a certain amount of energy resources that the mitochondria have, and if we overspend all that and the recovery is too slow, which is going to happen when there's mitochondrial dysfunction, then uh, we try to do activity the next day and say, no, you already spent your money. You have not saved it up, save it more. It's like, oh, I want to go out, you know, to, I'm, I'm a kid. I want to go to the movies. You know, I spent all my allowance on going to the movies and popcorn and whatnot. Um, then the next day I want to go to the movies again. So like you just can't do it. Now, of course, you can try to push your body and try to exercise. It's not the same limitations, um, but it's, uh, you're, you're just not going to be able to do it, at least not without consequences. So if you sneak into the movies and steal the popcorn, there, there could be consequences from that. Um, so in terms of, you know, tightening the exercise, as much as I, I hate to say it because I know myself uh, where I thankfully don't have um, exercise induced issues um, you know if somebody told me like oh you need to tone it down with your exercise I, I would hate that because I love just leaving it all out there um, you know on, on the mat so to speak um, however um, it, what I talk to my patients about is trying to find that sweet spot of like well you know if you do if say you can run 10 kilometers today and you know one kilometer the next day not so much well what I might do if it were me is I might run five kilometers and then see how I do with maybe a two kilometer run the next day. And if that goes fine, it's like, okay, so I spent five kilometers worth of mitochondrial resources. And then the next day um, I spent two kilometers worth and that was okay. And, and I guess in a scenario where somebody wanted to run every day, um, then I wonder, okay, well, can I run two kilometers again the following day? Yeah. Okay. Well, can I run three kilometers the following day and just start trying to like push some of those boundaries? Um, bearing in mind, there are going to be big fluctuations with, you know, what, uh, where is the person at with their hormone fluctuations and it of course applies to male and female patients um, where is one at with respect to stress levels um, has one been you know exposed to to mold or chemicals or whatnot and that might be impacting how they're feeling like there's just so many different moving parts and cycles and rhythms and whatnot so um, that can really vary a lot but generally that's the approach that I would uh, be thinking about and then finally um, reading 
verbatim here. Uh, finally, how long does it take for mitochondria to snap out of dysfunction? Which is a very fair question. And, and again, I cannot give a satisfying answer with that. Um, it really, really depends on um, how many insults have been inflicted upon the mitochondria, um, genetically, how robust a person is, um, uh, to how comprehensive the treatment protocol is to get things back on track, um, it really uh, it really varies a lot. Um, so it could take anywhere from like maybe a few months to maybe a few years, depending on a lot of different variables. I would say probably the average patient, you know, six to twelve months ish, um, give or take. But it, it there, there's a lot of variables that come into play there. So I'm sorry that's not a nice concise uh, satisfying answer, but that that is well, it's a relatively concise answer, I suppose. Anyways, thank you for the questions uh, again. As I said in the first part of the video, um, or the, the last video, very interesting topic. I think it's a great thing to be making a video about. There are two videos about, so thank you for the opportunity to do that. Um, if anybody has any questions about this topic or anything else, just post it in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can.